welcome student today's class will be learning about weather and climate it is your chapter 3 and it goes in your second term examination so let us continue with the chapter introduction introduction about weather what is weather weather is defined as the day-to-day -day condition which prevails over an area in regard to temperature pressure rainfall wind and humidity weather is something which is not static which is not permanent and keeps on changing every day might be after two days or three days okay it keeps on changing for example today it might be raining but tomorrow it might be a bright sunny day or very warm day or hot day as you say so weather is something which is not permanent and keeps on changing all the time that is your weather now what is climate climate is the overall average of those conditions of temperature rainfall wind humidity all this together form an average condition that condition which prevails over an area for a very long period of time of nearly 30 years or even more and does not change that is known as your climate here in the image uh, the world map is given and it is shaded in different colors the bright colors here the yellow are showing the warm areas the blue which is the polar regions are showing the cold areas these polar regions will always remain cool or cold and does not change such is your climate now difference between weather and climate or the weather versus climate let us see weather first point it says it keeps changing like we already have discussed that weather is something which is not static so it keeps on changing every day time to time place to place climate it reveals or prevails over a very large region you know it does not only contain um, in your area but country as a whole or a continent as a whole that is known as your climate weather it may include wind temperature storms rains, and sunshine so we get rain today we get sunshine tomorrow storms the other day so it keeps on changing whereas the climate is something which is static does not change regular interval and it remains there for 35 to 40 years example of weather rainy day sunny day and example of climate is the climate type of different regions in the world for example your hot and wet equatorial type weather forecasting weather forecasting is nothing but the prediction of weather for the future weather okay um, it has been uh, it is it is uh, predicted by the collection of data as much as possible by different different uh, instruments of uh, weather recording systems by uh, satellite images by satellite data they combine it they analyze it and they print or forecast the weather what's going to happen many of us have smartphone or we have many apps which tell us what kind of weather is going to be here in this image you can see monday it is partly sunny and partly cloud whereas on thursday it is raining and again on Saturday it is raining so it is forecasted they're telling you the condition of the weather beforehand topic is your meteorology meteorology is a science which deals with the study of weather it's called meteorology now just like the biology which deals with the study of life same way meteorology deals with the study of weather in weather we study about different weather aspects about tornado about cyclone about rain about sunny day and so on meteorologists now the scientists who, who study meteorology is known as your meteorologist okay the scientists who study weather is called your meteorologist atmosphere before we advance more further in the chapter let us learn about atmosphere we must have heard about this word many a time but what is atmosphere the envelope of air that surrounds the earth is called atmosphere means the layer of air which covers the earth okay just like you wear uh, sweaters in winter to keep yourself warm layer after layer of clothes you wear same way there are layers of layers of air that covers the earth that is called your atmosphere here in the image it is depicted in different color you can see the lighter blue shade here and then white black and so on it is here to depict the different layers of air that surrounds the earth and that is called your atmosphere 
Now, let us learn about the elements of weather and climate. What are the elements of weather or climate? Firstly, we have got temperature. Secondly, prevailing wind, atmospheric pressure, humidity, precipitation, sunshine, and lastly, your clouds. So these are the elements of weather and climate. Firstly, let us learn about temperature. The temperature is a measurement, measurement of a place or a region or a thing of knowing how hot or cold it is. Now, there are several factors that affect the temperature. Firstly, is your latitude. The latitude determines the place, whether it's having a very hot climate or a very cold climate. Example, the areas that are located in equator, they're very hot and warm, whereas the areas or regions which are located far away from the equator are cooler. Secondly, we have got altitude. Altitude means height. Places which are located in higher height or elevation is always cooler than the areas which are located in the lower altitude. Thirdly, we have got terrain. By terrain, we mean what type of physiography. Places, is it, is it plain areas, hilly areas, plateau areas, okay? The landforms on the earth surface also affect the temperature of a place. Lastly, you have got nearness to the sea. The places which are located near to the sea will always have a cooler climate compared to the places which are located far away from the sea or ocean. Here, uh, the question asking you about a device which is used to measure a temperature. I hope you know what it is. The answer is your thermometer. Second, let us go to atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? It's a pressure exerted by column atmosphere on the Earth's surface. It means the pressure exerted by the uh, atmosphere, particularly on the Earth's surface, is called your atmospheric pressure. Now, we already know what is atmosphere. Atmosphere is a layer of air that surrounds the Earth. But does air has a weight? The picture is clearly depicting you. Yes, it does have a weight. Here, uh, the yellow balloon is deflated, means there is no air inside, whereas the pink balloon have got air inside, and it is much heavier than the yellow balloon. This shows that air has weight, and that is why the atmospheric pressure is experienced on the Earth. Now, what are the factors that affect the atmospheric pressure? Firstly, it is your temperature, and secondly, it is your density. Name instrument used for measuring atmospheric pressure. Okay, what will it be? Yes, it is your mercury barometer. Now let us learn about prevailing winds. Now what is prevailing winds? Prevailing winds are those which blows constantly, okay, in a particular direction throughout the year. They don't change their direction. They keep on blowing in a particular direction all over the globe throughout the year. It's known as your prevailing wind. Now this prevailing wind originates okay, due to permanent presence of high pressure and low pressure belt. How is high pressure formed? High pressure is formed when the air is heated up and low pressure is formed when the air is cooled. So the air always moves from high pressure to low pressure. Here in this image you can see the direction of the wind blowing is, given, uh, uh, is shown by the help of arrows. So these are the direction of the wind which keeps on blowing on all over the earth and this follows this particular path. So these are your prevailing wind. Humidity. The amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere is known as humidity. Okay. Now humidity can be divided into two parts. Firstly, it is your absolute humidity. What do you understand by absolute humidity? Absolute humidity is the actual amount of water vapor that is present in the atmosphere. It is called your absolute humidity. How much quantity of water vapor is present in air? That is your absolute humidity. Secondly, we have got relative humidity. Relative humidity is the ratio between the amount of water vapor present in the air and the total amount of water the air can actually hold at a given temperature. That is your relative humidity. Here in this image is clay zone, the, the jar 
is an example of the air which is having less water vapor in compared to the second jar which is having much water vapor okay so this is uh, this is your relative humidity and relative humidity is always depicted in percentage now let us come to precipitation precipitation is the water droplets which fall on the earth in the form of rain or snow flakes okay example are your hail snow or rain now how does the precipitation form precipitation the water droplets okay the next slide precipitation the water droplets which fall on the earth surface in the form of rain or snow flakes are known as your precipitation examples are your hail snow rain okay here you can see in the image it falls in the form of rain it forms in the sleet it falls in the form of hail and snow sunshine another element of the weather and climate the amount of sunshine re received by the earth surface also determines the temperature of a place means how much amount a particular region of the earth is experiencing or receiving also determines it actually tells you how hot the place is or cold it is for example the areas which are located near to the equator or tropics will always have higher temperature they'll be always warmer and hot as compared to the areas which are far away from the equator or the areas which are in the polar areas the poles will have the lesser temperature and cool temperature here again in the image you can see it is shaded in different color show, showing you the amount of heat it is receiving by this sunshine the red one are the really hot zones slowly it is turning to yellow green blue sky blue and blue and so on so this is showing you the areas which are receiving sunshine the brighter color the red are more warmer and more hotter compared to the polar areas which are shown in blue color clouds we all know what cloud is right what was the definition of the cloud a cloud is a mass of water droplets or tiny ice crystal that is suspended in the air here in the image it is clearly showing you how the cloud is formed it is formed by water vapor and dust when the water vapor gets accumulated near the dust it form water droplets this water droplets and uh, keeps on joining more you know the keeps on gathering more and more and turns to more bigger size and they form the cloud now there are different types of cloud firstly sidus cloud cumulus clouds stratus cloud and nimbus cloud so in total there are four types of cloud sidus cloud now this cloud have got tiny crystals in them and they are formed in the high altitudes if you see the image you can see that it looks like a feather also it looks like a hair secondly cumulus cloud now these clouds are dense and widespread it spreads all over the sky it's having a flat base and often it looks like a cauliflower these cumulus clouds are also responsible for causing rainfall with lightning and thunder stratus cloud these clouds are formed in the lower altitude means not a very high place but in the lower altitude and it has got uniform layers and spread out all over the sky like like a sheet nimbus cloud these clouds are also known as the rain bearing clouds which are formed in the lower altitude why rain bearing clouds because they are the one who who causes most of the rain it appears very thick dark and spread out in layers in the sky hope you have understood the various topics on this chapter this is the first part of this chapter of weather and climate more explanations will be updated in your second video of this chapter so i request you all to please read your books please read your texts as much as possible and uh, try to solve the questions that are in your book thank you